How we doing, everybody? Welcome back. Well, these comics make good film and television shows. Episode 37. Stay tuned right now. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me while we look at these three books. We got Marvel, and we got DC, and we got Image. So uh, let's find out whether these guys make uh, good film and television shows. I am your host, Frank Zanka. I'm an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer. And you can see some of the stuff behind me that uh, I've written. Uh, and again, thank you everybody uh, to, that helped support Lords of L.A. Issue 2. Uh, we were completely funded, and uh, I just got another piece of artwork in today. So for you guys that did uh, support, uh, you're going to see an update with some of the new artwork. All right. Again, let's, so let's jump right into it. Uh, we're going to start with Amazon's Attack. This is number one. Uh, issue two is already out. I'm, I'm going to have that on order because I've kind of... This the whole Wonder Woman stuff that Tom King is doing, I've not been a fan of. And I'm not really a fan even of the storyline. Uh, but everybody said that Amazon's attack was better than Wonder Woman, <laughs> which is scary for us to have a, uh, a backup type of tie-in book that's a uh, limited series that's better than the main book. So uh, I don't know what to think of that. So I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. Uh, I like Wonder Woman's one of my favorite characters, as you can see also from behind me. And, uh, and it's unfortunate we really haven't had a good uh, Wonder Woman run in a very long time, probably since Greg Rucka. That's what I would say. Uh, so I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. Uh, I like Nubia. I, I, I don't like the fact that they, she took over being queen with Hippolyta still out there without Hippolyta being a, con, you know, a consultant or anything to that effect. Her kind of stepping down for a while after probably... <laughs> You know, a hundred years of being queen of the Amazons. That actually makes sense. Uh, and I know that she was supposed to be dead at a time. Uh, but then she wasn't dead. And Nubia remained being queen. And we all know kind of why that happened. Uh, but I, I don't think it was a bad move. Because it kind of refreshed things. And, you know, you didn't have somebody that wasn't queen forever. Or somebody that would make mistakes being queen. And that's why I think Hippolyta should still be around. Uh, but anyway, they chose not to. I don't know where she went. I wasn't collecting, uh, that stuff. But, uh, the Becky Clunrad, you know, stuff that was going on. So, let's jump into Amazon's Attack number one. So, this is, takes place during the whole thing with Tom King's run, where a Amazon, uh, committed murder, and all the Amazons were asked uh, to leave or they were getting rounded up to exile them back to Paradise Island. I wouldn't think that there would be a whole lot of them, but I guess there's literally thousands and thousands of uh, Amazons that have went to Man's World. I, I don't see that point, uh, especially when some of them are lesbians. And I think the only reason that you'd want to go to Man's World is in case you, know, you wanted to experience you know, love. But it, some of it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, it's called Paradise Island for a reason. But why would you go to Man's Lower World when they, you know, a lot of them dislike men in general? It doesn't. Some of it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I can see like a handful kind of going and going to experience something new. Uh, but, you know, I don't see like thousands of wanting to just go live. Maybe visit. You want to have a vacation. <laughs> is there like a uh, a travel specialist? Uh, is there orbits now that goes between uh, Themyscira and the uh, United States or Europe or whatever? I don't know. I don't know. That's a you know that's a good idea. Where is uh, and I guess they're getting they're paying in gold. I don't know. <laughs> Not like they have credit cards. I don't. I just, like, some of it doesn't really make any sense. Um, like when Wonder Woman came, she didn't have any money or anything like that. So I, I don't know how that would work. Uh, but anyway, so we start out with, you know, of course, the liberal and conservative media kind of doing their own takes on all that. And there's boats, you know, around Paradise Island. Um, because obviously everybody knows where it is now. 
And then we kind of jumped through the, to the throne room where there was another case of um, terrorism by this woman here. And she was wearing like the Wonder Woman logo on her. Um, so they're blaming the, you know, the Paradise Island and the Amazons, even though they had nothing to do with it. And I never look at the, the logos here. I know this was done, done, you know, a while ago when they brought in all the other tribes, which also makes no sense. But, uh, why would they all be very aggressive logos? You know, all cat based logos. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, they're supposed to be, you know, procurers of peace and stuff like that. And all their logos are like, <laughs> It didn't make any sense. But anyway, so of course, you know, uh, Nubia is uh, a lesbian. So she's, uh, that's her uh, bow there. And, you know, she's going to go and uh, talk to all of the leaders and kind of give her side of the story here or try to, you know, smooth things over. And she wants to go alone. And everybody's saying, no, you shouldn't go alone. And, uh, well, she doesn't really because we'll find out here in a second. But anyway, she gets led uh, into um, the building. And you see the girl knocking on the window. Well, that's uh, Mary Marvel. So that's, so we have a first a glimpse of Mary Marvel. But then there's this odd gas that comes around and is now affecting all of the Secret Service agents that then attack her. So she runs away and we have Faruka show up for one of the other, the other queen of one of the other tribes uh, who blocks it with her uh, sword. So she's not alone. Okay, so that's the first part of like, okay, she just kind of shows up willy-nilly in the building through security. Okay. Um, then, your floor shows up in the building through security. <laughs> but we do get to see Nubia block bullets, which is kind of cool. And then they all attack the, them and kind of push them out the window. So we have everybody falling through the window and uh, we get this nice little splash page here uh, that's up and down uh, of them all falling, you know, hundreds of stories, I guess. Uh, but, and then one of the, the guys that is uh, under whatever hypnosis or whatever else uh, turns back and of course we, they get saved by Mary Marvel. So we had to set up in the beginning. At least they set it up in the beginning. It wasn't just out of, out of willy-nilly. So, uh, so yeah. So and, and again, they're calling her Shazam, which makes no sense because she can't say her own name. Mary Marvel is a perfectly fine name for the character. There's no reason to change it. Uh, she's been Mary Marvel for decades. Um, and Captain Marvel, the same thing. I know that Marvel's got a Captain Marvel, but just you, you cannot say... Hi, I'm Shazam. <laughs> oh, no. So, close your eyes. Turn around. Turn, you, I, you did not see that. You did not see that. And sorry about the lightning singeing your clothes. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, they go uh, underground. And uh, they're all now blamed as terrorists. And they had, uh, I guess I got teleported over to, uh, uh, to Times Square. And that's the end of that. So, um, did I like it? It's a fun, it's a fun issue. I, you just have to get over the fact that it makes absolutely zero sense for these other two women to show up out of the blue with no security pass, no nothing, and they show up on like the 18th floor, 50th floor, whatever floor they're on, when that's completely impossible. Uh, so did they, what, did they get dropped in through the roof? <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I kind of wish that it was purely a Nubia story. That would have made, made way more sense. And then she could have hooked up with, uh, Floor and, uh, Faruka on the ground when they, uh, when Mary Marvel saves her. Through the, so we could have done everything else, uh, except have them show up inside the building. And I would have been fine with it. And, uh, and, you know, they could have 
he could have met them on the ground, and uh, and that would have made a lot more sense. But uh, so the writer here um, decided that she wanted the other characters in throughout, and uh, I forgot her name, uh, Josie Campbell. I don't know anything else she's ever written. Uh, the writing's not bad. It's just that I think an editor to say to say, yeah, let's just tweak this a bit. <laughs> the editors are like sitting on their ass doing nothing in these comic uh, companies, man. They're getting paid, you know, hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to do to make all these mistakes. It's crazy. Uh, so anyway, I liked it. Um, I would love to see uh, an Amazon, and I think this is where. Uh, What's his face? Uh, Gunn is was looking to do an Amazon series, and you know, having Nubia and stuff like that. You know, having all this stuff happen on Paradise Island. Uh, you know, but I don't know how that would work with Game of Thrones. It, 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 he said it was like a Game of Thrones type thing, and I can't see that happening. But if it was a back and forth between, you know, where she had to go to Man's World also, and there was stuff that. You know, and, and if they don't want to show Diana because it's too expensive to have whoever's playing Wonder Woman in a series, she doesn't have to be in it. There's plenty of stuff that you can do where it doesn't take place 100% on uh, Themyscira and still be a pretty good movie or TV show. So I'm all for that. And uh, and the characters are good. Newbie is a good character. And and adding Mary Marvel to it, the girl who plays Mary Marvel, Marvel in the um, in the Shazam movies, it was the, the best She's the best character in the thing, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so I'd love to see her more of her playing that part. In fact, the beginning of uh, of the new Shazam movie was the best part with them on the bridge. I mean, that was I thought that scene was pretty good. But anyway, so let's move on to the Avengers by Jed McKay. Okay, so we're on number eight. We're on issue eight with this piece of living shit. Um, I know people are saying that it's better than what Jason Aaron was doing, and that may be the case, but if, if, uh, Jason Aaron was writing shit, this is shit with, uh, you know, Hershey's kisses on them. <laughs> so I, I watched, I looked at some of the reviews on, um, uh, on the comic, uh, site, and, uh, what's it called? Uh, Comic Book Roundup. And they were giving this thing a high grades. I'm like, are you guys reading something different than I'm reading? Because, I don't know. I mean, Jed McKay's also writing Moon Knight, and I like Moon Knight. Uh, the, the last thing with all the gods or whatever else that looked really retarded, I didn't like that at all. And I'm like, well, I'll keep buying it until we see the next, you know, the, the next arc. And this is the next arc. And now there's these... So, Kang came to Captain Marvel... And gave him a list, gave her a list of uh, all the of people that were might have been in danger that need to be saved. So she went and saved them, and uh, you know, when he was in a coma or something like that. I don't really know what's going on with that. But anyway, this other group came to collect Kang, and the Avengers kind of stood in their way. But on the same time, uh, actually, it's just Wanda and Vision standing against them. And everybody else is in a nightmare world with Nightmare, the character actually named Nightmare. Uh, so they're all laying on the ground. But this is how imaginative he is. He took all the names of all the knights of the round table, Arthur, etc., Mordred, etc., and then gender swapped them. Gender slash race swapped in some case. Uh, so we have a girl named Mordred. What, since when is Mordred a girl's name? Uh, Lancelot. So he's calling her Lance and it's a woman. It doesn't, it just make up new names, man. Why would these aliens and everything else be named after King Arthur's knights? It makes no sense. And then the race swapping slash gender swapping makes even less sense. I don't get it. So, anyway, we start with these guys, and that's what they, you see what they look like? They don't look like knights, but that's what they're called. And when we go right into the fight scene from that flashback, so we go right into the fight scene with Wanda and Vision and the knights. Ho-hum. That's all I can tell you, ho-hum. And 
Meanwhile, the other guys are caught in uh, in the nightmare realm. That's all the different nightmares. Meanwhile, Wanda and uh, Vision are trying to hold their own. And uh, Thor realizes that they're in Nightmare with Nightmare's realm, so he summons them. He breaks the, the, the barrier between their nightmares, and they all join each other. All right? Meanwhile, again, we're having the fight scene with Wanda, and, and the artwork is just... I don't think the artwork's good in here at all. I mean, the brush strokes are huge. I mean, the, the inking on this is just immense. I mean, look at look at the line artwork on that. It's just... It's bad. Um, and then one of the women says, oh, it's, you know, the, the balances for the scales are out of balance or whatever else. So then Nightmare says to them... I want respect, damn it! Give me respect! And they were like, what do you want? We, I want you to bow and say, I won. I want us you to say, I am the bestest ever! And they're like, hell no, hell no! And then, this is the best part of the whole book as far as I'm concerned. And then Thor starts laughing. He's like, all you want to do is for us to say you're the bestest? Okay, you're the bestest. Let's get out of here now. You're the bestest ever, Dead Nightmare. <laughs> I thought that was original. Uh, and I really, really hate Captain Marvel's new costume. She looks like a band player out of high school. It's just god awful. I don't know who designed that, but they need to be shot at least several times. So anyway, so he, uh, he says, now send us back. I told you you were the bestest. Let's send us back. Meanwhile, uh, Vision and, uh, and Wanda are not, they're feeling every bit of it. And then, of course, they all show up. Yay. Look how bad that costume is. It's awful. Jeans and a jacket for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't need to tell you, but this is to be the last Avengers book I'll be reviewing. I am dropping the title. It is... Uh, thank God there's no Avengers movies coming up, I guess. <laughs> Jed McKay's stuff, they would not be translating or adapting into any kind of movies, that's for sure. He, he writes, he, why, Jason Aaron's Larry Rob was crap. He lasted for like 10 years. He wouldn't get off that thing. I don't know how, how long Jed McKay's going to stay on this, but God, get us somebody, man. Get us somebody that can write the freaking Avengers. Why does everything have to be so godly and worldly? I mean, all you got to do with the ventures is limit the amount of them. That's what was so great about the Justice League cartoons. There would be three or four of them, and that would be it. And then every uh, episode would have a different group of characters from the Justice League in it. You know, so there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's ways to write Avengers stories that are not just world-encompassing every single time. You know, so, I don't know. I, I just think that they need a, they're a different take on that. But uh, So I'm going to say no to that one. And let's get into Sacrificers. Yes, Sacrificers. Uh, this is by Rick Remender. Uh, this is issue uh, five already. I don't know how long it's going to go. Uh, if it goes past ten or twelve, uh, something wrong. But because uh, I don't think this, I don't know if this this can't possibly be an ongoing. Um, even though I was kind of worried, worried about Void Rivals being ongoing too. So anyway, this is about a group of gods that have a elixir maker, and they're all different. Some are human looking, uh, but literally, it's. Um, the, the, the god of the, of the sun and the goddess of the moon and, you know, the goddess of harvest and it's all that kind of thing. And every family throughout the kingdom has to, I think it's every 20 years or 15 years or something like that, has to give one of their children up. And what they do with these children is once they bring them to the palace or whatever, they treat them like Willy Wonka kind of thing where they you know, treat them really well, they go have fun, here's all the food you can eat, and then they bring them into this room and they tap their brains and they suck out their brains into like an elixir, and if it, if they have fear, it comes out red, and if they're happy, it comes out, so they have to seek a sneak attack at them 
so that uh, this elixir is blue and it's happy. And then the gods drink these things and it turns them back to being young. So they're alive forever. And in this one, we, we get that the elixir maker wanted some accolades this time. Because uh, everybody said, oh, it's the best ever, blah, blah. And, uh, and then the god, sun god that he works for said, yeah, uh, I did it. I did the best of thing. And he leaves the elixir maker, you know, out of it completely and he gets pissed. So he goes home to wherever his home is thing. It looks like a factory. So, and well, let me just show you. So, yeah, it's the first page. So he, he looks like a factory. So he's going home, but the princess who's like, has a moon thing on her face and also has fire coming out of her hair, who's on the cover here. Uh, she follows him with her little pet doggy thing. And uh, so he complains to his wife uh, that he got no respect and he takes off the helmet and he's a pigeon character just like the main character is also a pigeon. And he's pissed off and he's, you know, barking to his wife and blah, blah, blah. And... His wife is one of the people that actually takes the... I, I assume their wife. I don't know. Anyway, they're companions of some sort. Uh, is the one that actually does the extraction of the brain goo. Uh, that becomes the elixir. So she uh, she says, yeah, but we took double amount of, of people this time. So we can take the elixir this time. And they wouldn't know the difference. And then as they're you know plotting this, uh, you hear, enough! And then I'm like, oh, they got... The, this princess came in there and heard them, but she didn't. She's like, what goes on here? Because she doesn't know anything about the making of the elixir or anything like that. She's like, what is this place? And trying to be tough. And that didn't... Uh, and he says, I'll show you. I'll show you everything that goes on here. And then she gets surrounded by these uh, monsters and she goes to town on them. And, uh, and kills them all. Not all of them, unfortunately. But she kills one of the... Uh, all, all but one. So she's chopping heads. And she goes through this whole fight scene. Which is pretty good. Until one of them grabs uh, the pet. And she's like, no, no. I dropped my sword. I, uh, I Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. Uh, she shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so anyway, the... Uh, the guy kills the animal anyway, and she's crying, and then we switch to the pigeon guy. Uh, he's the main character. And they're all playing, and all this stuff, and he's like, no, you guys go ahead. And he dives into, because he, he's waiting for the next shoe to drop. He knows something's going to happen. He knows nobody's coming back. Uh, so he's the least stupid of them, I guess. <laughs> And he jumps into the water, um, which we have this whole swimming scene, and he gets to this grate, and then we don't find out what happens. He tries to bite it or something, but he gets to this grate, and then we don't see anything what happens after that. Then we switch back to the princess, who is now in the machine where they extract the brain stuff. And the, uh, the elixir maker is like, uh, yeah, I'm going to kill you. And uh, the wife is like, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. She is the princess. And he's like, yeah, I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> he's pretty much, that's what he says. I guess he's got nothing else to lose. So he's like, ah, fuck this shit. <laughs> so all through this whole thing, I'm wondering if he's actually going to do it. And he does. He does. He kills the princess and extracts the fear. See, the bottom thing is fear. So, I have no idea. So, this was a shot in the arm. Uh, so, now I have no idea because I thought that the princess, what I was assuming was going to happen, the princess and the pigeon guy were going to team up and it was going to, you know, they were going to topple the system and we were going to do all this. But now I have no idea what's going to happen. I just have no clue. I'm very interested to find out what happens. It's obviously very, very dark. You know, there's all these murders of children going on and stuff to that effect. And uh, and now we have an, another villain. I mean, there's really no good guys here. Besides the pigeon guy, there's no good guys. So the gods are all bad. They have no problem, 
you know, uh, sacrificing these people, and now the the uh, elixir maker is bad. Uh, the princess is dead. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what's going on. Uh, is the pigeon guy even gonna live? You know, is this gonna have any kind of a happy ending or no? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. For all I know, it's gonna it's gonna be tragedy all the way through. Uh, but very good. And as I said in the other issues, this could never be made into a live action the way it is. So I'm going to say yes to Sacrificers, but it would have to be an animated, like a, an adult animated cartoon. Now, I don't know how that would go over, uh, considering there's like really no human characters. All the main characters are all alien to a certain extent. Um, but you never know. But I think that uh, animation would be the way to go. The only way they could do it with uh, live action would be if they turned everybody human. And that would kind of take away from the world building. But anyway, that's uh, that's it for Sacrificers. And then we'll go with the uh, recap on Avengers. Uh, no, I, I'm so over uh, Jed McKay's writing of the Avengers. So over it. Uh, I'm not even, not even going there. And Amazon's Attack... I'm going to say yes. I think that would actually... I, th I think that the the tribes thing... There's a way to make it work. And if you're going to do an Amazon TV series, it wouldn't work as a film. Uh, it would have to be some kind of a TV series. Uh, but yeah, uh, Nubia taking over the role of Hippolyta and her stepping down for a bit. Um, I, I think that all works. And But it would ha it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do like James Gunn's trying to do and have it all on Themyscira. You'd have to go back and forth. That's the only way this works, which is what they're, what they're writing. Um, so, yeah, Josie Campbell or whatever her name is, uh, yeah, decent. Just needed a few tweaks that went overboard. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and, again, thank you for, uh, for helping me fund uh, Lords of L.A. Issue 2. I will have late pledge, but it won't be to the beginning of the year uh, if you've missed it. And uh, you guys have a very great, uh, happy holiday. I'm going to continue saying that until it actually comes to be the holiday. <laughs> and I'll have some other videos pop up here if you're new to the channel. Uh, we do uh, comic reviews and movie reviews and, uh, uh, and board game stuff as well. So whatever you're into on the, uh, on the pop culture side, I, I'm probably doing something with it. All right. Thank you again, everybody. And you guys have an awesome day. Thank you.